the air, the air supply for this particular unit has to, in, we have to ensure that those gaskets are in good repair and the clasp is not damaged. Also the retainer on the double bolt clamp, the two retainers have to catch the edge of the fitting itself and that is the stem of the ferrule itself that goes down inside the hose. So ensure that all of this is tight and the gasket is in good repair. Also too, that gasket has to marry the secondary gasket, which is the coupling side of this. So where these two go together, there is an alternate gasket, so one, two. The gaskets must be in good repair and uh, on a conic uh, of a conical shape. The whip check slides over the A-type coupling gasket and is backed into the, the stem of the fitting itself so that, and the retainer must come up and slide forward. The spring does this for you to hold it in place. So then we couple the unit up like so. It's important to remember that when you couple these up, there's not too much stress or the hose, if it's not laid appropriately, will have what we call recoil in it anyway. So primary recoil is something you need to relinquish prior to trying to fit these up, otherwise it can spin back off. So now that we have that in place, with the A-type couplings there is also a securing pin hole on either side. So with a pin, we can slide the pin into the two holes, slide the pin around so that this fitting can now uh, maintain its functionality without coming undone. So the whip check itself, happy days, not really, because the whip check needs to be nice and tight. If that was loose like that, if the hose came off, as you'll see, if the hose comes off for any reason, with slack in the whip check, the hose can swing around quite easily. So it's important that when you utilise a whip check, you ensure that the whip check is tight so that if the hose does come undone, the whip check's taut and will hold the hose within a reasonable area of the surface so prior to anyone uh, getting hurt from the things whipping around of its own volition. The air itself goes into what we call a regulator. The regulator is governed by a small diaphragm in the top. 